Good morning, everyone. I'm Olivia Holas for Boca Magazine, and it's another coffee break with weekly guest Marius Jed, managing partner of Jed Lawyers. How are you doing, Marty? Doing great, Olivia. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's already another Thursday, and today we're going to be chatting about boating accidents. And I can only assume that this is something that happens quite frequently in Florida. So how common is it from your experience? You know, living in Florida, being surrounded by water on both coasts, we unfortunately see a lot of um, horrific accidents and minor accidents, but there are a lot of um, incidents and accidents on the water all the time. Right. And, you know, Marty, you love to fish, so you probably do a lot of boating yourself. What are the primary causes of boating accidents? So I love to be on the water. I love... I. It, that's one of my favorite things to do, my pastimes, fishing, being on the water. And when I'm out there just observing other people, it's a lot of inexperienced boaters, uh, people who don't know what they're doing, have no idea to hop, operate a vessel, <clears throat> never taken the proper safety classes and instructional classes, and then unfortunately, drinking. A lot of these guys that are captains, men and women, you know, unfortunately, they're drinking behind the wheel and not taking care of their people on the boat. And as the captain of the boat, you're responsible for every single person on that boat and what happens to them. So you got to be careful. So are maritime laws similar to motor vehicle laws? So maritime laws are a lot different, actually. And that depends on how far you are, you are in the water, what na navigational route you are in, or where you may be located in the water. But the maritime laws, which apply to the cruise ships, predominantly in the, the different people in the... Um, in the different uh, longshoremen, different fishing industries, those laws apply to them. And there are many different laws and they're much different than the traditional motor vehicle slash negligence laws. So for someone who's not, you know, on a, you know, not in the cruise business or, you know, those kinds, if, if they don't fall under maritime law, what does a personal boater fall under? Sure, they fun, uh, fall under Florida law. There okay. are Florida laws that apply to boaters in the water and safe and safe use and operation of a boat. And we sometimes see the FWC, um, which is the investigative force of Florida or the Florida Water Police, involved actually in a lot of different incidents on the water. For example, right in Boca, Lake Boca, technically that is a body of water that is not under the jurisdiction of the Boca Police. It's under the jurisdiction of the FWC. Um, so when you see all the people congregating in Lake Boca for their um, you know, rafting when they tie up and party and they're tailgating on the boats, um, a lot of times you don't see the police or the Boca police doing anything. And most of the reasons is because it's not in their jurisdiction. It's within the FWC's jurisdiction. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Um, and is boating insurance coverage similar to motor vehicle coverage? And how is property damage on water covered by insurance companies? Great question. Motor vehicle insurance and boat insurance are different, but there's tremendous amounts of similarities. There's a component called bodily injury. Um, which is a component you would purchase on the boat. And what that means is, God forbid, you're in an accident with someone else and cause bodily injury to that other person. By your negligence, your insurance would cover you. And similarly um, to auto accidents, there's medical, uh, excuse me, auto insurance. There's a medical payments component. In Florida, we call it PIP on the auto side. On the boat side, we call it medical payments. So for example, if someone is on your boat and slips and falls and God forbid breaks their ankle because um, maybe you're on a wake or hit, hit a, a wave, that injury to the person on your boat would be covered under your insurance under the medical payments. Another really important component of boat insurance is you can purchase what's called stated value. And what that means is, let's say you get into an accident or your boat burns down because of an electrical fire to your CV, which happens a lot, electrical fires your boat is covered for the stated value. Like a car, boats depreciate. So when you buy a boat, they're extremely expensive, you know, not cheap things to buy, millions and millions of dollars for yachts. That boat is depreciating. And if that boat has a fire, you could insure it for the stated value so you get the value that you predetermined with the insurance company. That's actually one of the nicest components about a boat. A lot of car insurance companies don't offer that. Boating insurance does offer that. And then additionally, with your insurance of your, in your car, we call it uninsured or underinsured motorist. That's what protects you and your vehicle because in Florida, there's no requirement to protect yourself. You just gotta protect the other person and it's the same on a boat. So that underinsured or uninsured 
component of the voting and the voting policy protects you and the people on your vote that if you get hit by someone else and they don't have insurance or the proper insurance you're covered big big deal we look at boat insurance all the time for clients and for people we don't charge um, to look at those deck page i don't sell insurance we just know what's right to buy so if there's, you're ever interested in someone to look at your policy and give you a quick look at it we're more than happy to do that well, that kind of is a great segue to my next next question in terms of what is the typical insurance coverage that a voting enthusiast should get? And, you know, what's a key factor that they should not overlook when selecting the policy? Sure. So it's great. Nowadays, you can go to Geico, Progressive, all the big carriers offer um, boat insurance. Um, and I love Geico and Progressive. They do a great job. And I've actually been insured for my boat with them before. The components that I mentioned that are necessary are bodily injury, number one, which protects your assets in case you hurt someone else. So, so if someone sues you, the insurance company will defend you, number one, and pay a claim if you were negligent. Second component, and equally as important, is that underinsured, uninsured motorist component. And then the third component is the medical payments to protect the passengers on the boat. The stated value is kind of a plus, but it does cost you a couple extra bucks. If your um, boat is newer and you have a loan on the boat, it's like gap insurance of your car. You want to make sure you protect that um, value of the boat because if the boat burns down or sinks, you still got to pay the bank the money to borrow to buy the boat. Mm -hmm. So right. those are the key parts. And then always as a supplemental, you'd be a fool not to get a towboat USA or a sea tow. Um, Every boater has had an example where they've been in a situation where you run out of gas, something happens, the boat breaks down. And I'll never forget my pretty embarrassing story. On Mother's Day, five years ago, 2015, we took our boat over to Lake Wyman. We have a pontoon, which we love, and we beached it. I don't know if you know where Lake Wyman is on the intercoastal. We beached it on the lake, or excuse me, on the beach. The tide went out. We were there all day, and the boat got stuck on the beach. We couldn't get the boat off the beach, and my wife wanted to kill me. <laughs> we called. I didn't have Sito at that point, and I called Sito to come take me off the, the beach, and they wanted $1,800 to pull me off the boat pull me off the beach, excuse me. So I said to my wife and kids, we're just gonna wait the four hours for the tide to come up. And that's what we did. <laughs> so CETO or Boat USA, key component. It's like hundred bucks a year. It's like AAA, you gotta get it. That's definitely worth it. But you know what, a memorable Mother's Day, that's for sure. You'll never forget 2015. So. No, that's for sure. <laughs> um, and does your law firm have attorneys with this type of expertise? We do. We handle maritime cases. We handle boating accidents. And we handle a lot of, you see a lot of jet ski accidents. Being in Florida, uh, rental companies and people traveling here on vacation, a lot of young kids love to rent the jet skis and rip around on those things. And man, they're so dangerous. Just be careful with them. Uh, so yes, we do handle those cases and we see all types of accidents. Right. And what is one final tip that you can give um, to boaters out there? Make sure you're with someone who's knowledgeable of the local waterways and the local rules. If you're going on a boat with someone who has no idea what they're doing, or if you're renting a boat here, which you can easily do, make sure there's someone with you who knows the, the navigable waters and understands the safety of boating. It truly is extremely fun, but when things go bad, they go bad really fast, and you got to know what you're doing. Right. Awesome tip. Last question, Marty. What is your favorite genre of music? I'm pretty diverse. I go from Fish to Tupac. Um, so I like all different types of music. Uh, again, broad spectrum. And I don't think there's a favorite type, but there's a lot of different types that I like. Right, so what's on your playlist right now? What's on my playlist right now? I've been listening to a lot of Yacht Rock Radio, um, Sirius XM, one yeah. of my favorite channels. And then I go to Sinatra next. Oh, awesome. Big time Sinatra fan. Oh my gosh, you know what? That's such a classic. You can never go wrong with Frank Sinatra. Never. Well, thank you so much again for chatting with us. Another super informative coffee break with you, Marty. So we really appreciate your knowledge and sharing with us all. Thanks, Olivia. You have a great day and a great weekend. Thank you. See you next week. And to our viewers, thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. Bye. Have a great afternoon, guys. Enjoy your coffee.